everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms, coming at you guys today with a segment all about holsters, different types of holsters inside the waistband, outside the waistband, thigh rigs, mid, high, low rise, whatever you want. We're gonna discuss all things holsters and let's just hop right into it. So my personal take on holsters is quite simple, don't cheap out. Last thing you want in a high stress situation is a holster that's gonna fail you or something, for instance, if you're not used to having to hit a little button to send that guy forward to draw your firearm and now all of a sudden you're sitting over here struggling with it, you know, you can't get it to go uh, and it's just sitting there and working against you, uh, all of a sudden that may just have cost your life. So look at it that way to put it quite blatantly. So don't cheap out on a holster. There are plenty of holsters out there on a budget if you're looking for them uh, that I guess work, but me, Specifically, uh, I'm not gonna run a whole lot of cheap stuff. Uh, and speaking of which, let's go ahead and start off with something like this right here. You guys have probably seen a lot of paddle holsters out there. Uh, this Glock 34 is currently in this Black Hawk, I think it's called like a Serpa, Serp, you know, type of holster or something like that. And it's got a finger button type of release on it. Now, here's a reason why I don't really like one of these. When I first started carrying a gun, you know, I thought these were all the jam. You know, I saw like, you know, uh, some of the detectives wearing them or something, you know, and I was like, oh, this look really high speed. That's cool. You gotta do is push that button and go. Well, a lot of people, again, this is probably just a lack of training on their side. A lot of people, what they were doing were, applying pressure look where you're applying pressure because it is under tension which is nice and it's not going to break free from the holster but what you notice is when you're pushing that button look right where you're applying pressure the trigger is literally right there and as they pull they don't let off on that pressure or they might have just a little bit short fingers so instead of riding on the trigger guard like where my fingers at right now it's riding right here in the trigger and as soon as they pull they're grabbing it and pulling the trigger as they come out. And of course, you can imagine if you're doing that from here, you come out, you're pretty much shooting yourself right into like, ow, I just shot myself, right? Everybody saw that video. So uh, give and take with these, that's for sure. Nice thing about them is they're quick to draw, sure. They're quick to draw, they're a paddle holster, which is just very easy to fit right into the waistband right here. And then it kind of just, you know, after you snug it down, I don't feel like it gripping onto my pants because it does have that right now and I'm trying to fight with that to get it off. Uh, so these Blackhawk holsters are out there, they're available. If you know you need something, I guess it's better than nothing, uh, but at the same time, it's, just, just train with what you got, all right? Just don't hurt yourself. Anyway, moving on, outside the waistband holsters, I think are great holsters for you open carry type guys. Uh, for me, at the range, you guys usually see what I run here. It's this big bulky thing. There's nothing concealed, nothing screaming, oh hey, you know, pff, I'm not tactical here or anything like that, right? This is pretty much, that, 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 that's a lot, right? And Honestly, I'll be honest, it's not necessary, but I train with all the products that I like to use as far as what I fight with, right? Train how you fight type of situation. And all of my gear that I have, uh, none of it's been really provided to me. All of it is stuff that I actually had before working here. I may have added a couple of things along the way, and I'm always kind of changing up how I run different things. Uh, but this is just something how I run with because, well, if I'm shooting competition, if I'm shooting more tactical, whatever it is, this is my loadout, all right? And the holster I have on this guy uh, it's actually a smaller company because I like supporting local business, of course. Uh, it's DME Holsters, and it's running with a Safari Land shroud, leg shroud. And what's cool about this is, let's say you've got, like I do, multiple pistol platforms that you want to run, um, but you only have one type of holster set up, right? Well, what's neat is, with their little fork adapter, you'll see right here, this is all Safari Land here. You can run, like I've got my FNX 45 Tactical here with that same fork set up. So now with the leg shroud set to whatever height that I want it at, I put it in there and it's locked into place and not going anywhere. Easy enough and super cool. So you have all these different types of adapters that are out there as well that are, you know, quick detach, things like that. So that way you can run multiple different systems or different firearms. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, the holster that my FNX is in here, 
It was a uh, KT mech. Again, there are so many different companies out there that produce Kydex holsters for all sorts of different variations out there. Uh, this is Ryan's Beretta M9A3 here with the uh, Surefire X300. This is a QVO holster with that same type of leg shroud setup and the fork QD adapter from Safari Land. So another one if I wanted to just pop it right there. So even though these two look a heck of a lot similar, uh, there are some differences here and the biggest one is obviously that this one here has a retention on it that requires a certain level of security right you have all these different levels out there um, but what i like about this one is the fact that if i do have to run if i do have to move if i have to get on the ground or something like that i don't have to worry about my pistol leaving <laughs> my holster and that is something yes i do uh, kind of worry myself with a lot of you guys aren't really so much worried about that and running something like this guy here isn't bad. But what's cool about these are, same thing with this one, is you can adjust the level of tension on right here. So all it takes is a screwdriver and then you've got these little rubber pads in here and as you start to tighten that down, it tightens the tension on this guy to the point where you can almost not even remove your gun. So that's actually pretty cool stuff. So if you actually wanted to have a real tight tension on your holster without a locking system on it, that's completely fine. You can do that. Just tighten the heck out of these guys here and then your pistol, you don't have to worry about falling out, which is pretty sweet. And then it just, again, takes a certain level of force to pull the firearm away from the holster. Pretty neat, right? Uh, so we're going to continue on with some outside the waistband holsters here. Another one that I've got from my Glock. Now this is a leather Kydex combo. This one's pretty cool. This is from Black Point Tactical, what they, I think they call the leather wing. I think it is, uh, which makes sense since it has leather wings, almost literally. And this is for my Glock 19. And I actually have an entire uh, competitive little holster system by them. And what's neat is you can actually change out how you have your magazines placed, things like that. Uh, so pretty sweet. And I like running this when I want to be a little bit more concealable, but outside the waistband carry. If I'm wearing just a unbuttoned, you know, long sleeve shirt, I can still carry this guy, have the, the shirt kind of draping over it, or if I'm wearing a jacket, something along those lines, which is pretty cool. Or if I'm working and I just want to have a gun on me, this is typically what I'm carrying right here because it's super comfortable it conforms more to the body due to that leather wing that it has on it. Again, outside the waistband, great for a lot of movement, things like that. But there are times when you don't really need to go outside the waistband. And if you are legally able to, if, you, if your state allows it, if you've got your concealed carry permit, things like that, I definitely recommend concealed carrying out in the public eye simply because you don't want to make yourself a target, right? Uh, for instance, I'm not going to be going to a local grocery store wearing all of this when I could just wear something like this and actually feel a little bit safer. Again, if you're outside being flamboyant with what you got going on out in the public eye, like I said, not just at your local range training with your gear, I think there it's kind of accepted. But going out, people might first off start questioning you, like what the heck is going on? And let's say something bad does go down. Well, I'm gonna take out that guy first because he's packing the most firepower, obviously, 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 right? I don't want him to be this good hero, you know, this, this, you know, good Samaritan to try to stop the bad guy. I'd, I just want him to be out of the way. So you kind of want to make yourself, you know, that, that gray man, as a lot of people say, you know, you're kind of lingering behind the scenes, going about your daily life, but at the, any time, any possibility, any realm of the moment where that becomes, you know, a bad day, you pop out of nowhere and you be that hero, you be that good guy or whatever it is, or you just, defend yourself. So I definitely recommend inside the waistband holsters for concealed carry. And this is a We The People holster that I've got for this little Smith & Wesson MMP9 shield here with a little uh, laser on it, isn't that cool? Anyway, this guy is definitely a great gun for concealed carry, single stack nine mil, which is pretty sweet. And again, if you're having to draw quickly, low light settings, whatever it might be, it still has that you know laser on it that you can point at if you need. But what I like about this is the fact that I will usually carry this about right here somewhere. Uh, for me, yes, I know a lot of people have issues with inside the waistband appendix carrying. Uh, me personally, that's what I like, especially with this compact little guy here, because it allows for me, when I'm carrying this, I can drape my shirt over it and it doesn't print at all that can really recognize uh, that you're carrying a gun, which is pretty cool. Sometimes it might just look like you know a larger belt buckle or something like that. 
But what I like about these, it's easy enough to start getting in that habit and training of ripping the shirt, pulling the gun, and then going. Uh, the, what, I, what I don't like about carrying at other positions is I don't really have eyes on my gun. In other words, if I'm carrying it like the small of my back, uh, I don't know if maybe at one point I bent over and now all of a sudden my gun is showing. Um, I'm always constantly doing this number. It's easy enough for me. Like, hey, am I printing a whole lot with my gun? Let me just take a look. Nope, cool. Very easy to conceal your firearm with that appendix carry uh, inside the waistband. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments section below, uh, but that's just how I like to run it personally, all right? Now there's also another one out there, and yes, every now and then I will actually conceal carry this thing as you see it right here. There's a lot happening here, but this is definitely more of a wintertime carry where you're carrying more, more clothes, things like that. Um, and I'll usually run with this guy. It's not the most comfortable thing. I will say that this uh, armadillo concealment uh, holster for your light, but this is set up for a Streamlight TLR1 series light. So I can do that number right there, but I love this because if I'm just riding around with it in my car, in my console, whatever it is, if I'm going on a long trip or something, I can do this number, throw it in my console, the trigger and the trigger guard is protected. I don't have to worry about anything getting in here and touching the trigger and having an accidental discharge. That is never a good thing. Um, make sure if you do have a holster that it is actually covering the trigger area, things like that, and make sure that they're, you know, uh, quality. I did see one where a guy, where a guy had like a leather you know, holster that you carry in your back pocket and the leather bent a little bit and he sh shot himself in the butt. So uh, let me know down in the comments if you saw that because it was traveling all over social media for a while. Anyway, I do like this guy because I can run it on all sorts of different types of systems. So I can run it, like I said, on this guy here. If I'm traveling, have it sitting somewhere, it just mainly protects everything. If I do want to run it, you know, concealed, I can. Again, like I said, this is a little bit more of a uh, winter time carry, but this is kind of a big bulky package to be carrying. You're not really all that comfortable trying to bend over, work, whatever it might be. But if I wanted to run, you know, my M9A3, that I have right here also has a TLR1 on it. There you go, locked up, looks good, and it stays in place. And again, it's covering the trigger, which I think is one of the more important parts, obviously. Right, so very cool. And it's also got decent tension on these. That's one thing that's nice about Kydex is that it's form fitted to whatever type of system you're running, to your gun, to your light, to whatever. So pretty nice stuff, guys. I just kind of want to run that down for y'all and what my preference is as far as carrying. Uh, this is just something, like I said, I've had ever since I started getting into firearms and not exactly understanding what <laughs> being proficient is, uh, things like that. But not bad. I'm. Again, if you've got it, train with it. That's all I'm going to say. That goes for any holster. I think the biggest thing that a lot of people miss out is they go for all this Gucci gear and everything else, and they're like, hey, this is awesome stuff. But if you've never trained with it before, it doesn't matter because you could have the most expensive setup in the world, and then you could have some guy that, hey, he's went budget on everything, but he's proficient with it, and he trains with it, and he knows how to use it, and he's going to take you out every day. That's all there is to it. So train with what you got, guys, and let me hear from you guys down in the comments section about what holsters you like to run. If you have any questions about the gear here, this is a high speed gear industries belt. We have an entire video about my range gear overview and all that type of stuff. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, you know, just go check that video out. Leave it, leave a comment over there. I keep going back there to answer you guys, but high speed gear padded belt with one of their Cobra belts. Again, the Safari Land leg shroud uh, and their fork system. The, the, uh, I think it's the QLS fork is what it is, quick locking system fork, and that goes for whatever holster you want, really, and whatever type of firearm you want as well, and it just locks right into place, easy stuff. So, very cool. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. If you have any questions, again, leave them down in the comments section. I'll see you guys down there. Let me know what uh, you like to run for your concealed carry, for your open carry, if that's what you choose to do, for your range type setup for you it's hit the fan and you got a strap up kid up uh what what do you carry in there i'd like to know all right last thing i want to talk about is our current giveaway we just started this giveaway guys the Reaper, the Rapid Engagement Precision Rifle by LWRCI chambered in 7.62 NATO with that Vortex Strike Eagle optic. This thing is still the flattest shooting 7.62 rifle I've ever shot, and I absolutely love it. Go check out our video announcing this as our current giveaway. Don't miss out on it. Classicfirearms.com. Hit that top banner to go get your entries and uh, code word.
Reaper, code acronym, R-E-P-R. -E it is not like the Grim Reaper. There's no A, there's no nothing else in there. It's just R-E-P-R, all right? So don't miss out. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.